Hey there, this is Liam Martin from Running Remote, and today we are discussing cybersecurity for remote working. In this video, we're going to talk about eight quick and easy tools and solutions to protect remote workers, their clients, and employers from cyber attacks. So there's been a ton of news about a lot of companies and governments dealing with cyber attacks and hacking. While this news proves that even the most secure entities in the world can be compromised, remote workers can, in some cases, be targets or at the very least, more susceptible than on-premise companies. I could spend an entire video just on the challenges of securing cloud-based remote work platforms, but honestly, that's another video for another day. So first up, let's talk about VPNs. VPN is basically a virtual private network. Imagine you're connecting to a publicly accessible Wi-Fi network at an airport lounge, coffee shop, or even your apartment building provided internet. Even if there is a password for the network, even if it's a secure network, broadband companies still have complete ability to access important data. A VPN allows you to have an encrypted tunnel between you and a remote server. Not only is all your data safe, but you can also mask your identity and physical location. I personally love NordVPN for these reasons. Full disclosure, they have been a sponsor of Running Remote, but I was using them even before that and I'm a big believer in their product. Next up, password vaults. Just like there are a ton of different VPN solutions, there are also a lot of different programs out there that can store your login credentials and secure locations in an encrypted format. They all pretty much do the same thing, but seem to have different features or added functionalities. Some are standalone mobile or desktop apps, while others have browser extensions. One that stands out is 1Password, which has a unique travel mode that can temporarily delete stored passwords to protect them from snoopy border guards. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when you actually are getting inspected by border guards, they don't actually need your permission to be able to access your computer or your phone or anything like that. They either say, give me the password to your phone or go back to the country you came from. I've had that happen to me more than once. So it's really important to be able to remove password access from that. And 1Password, which is the product that I personally use, has these fantastic features, which are really great for either a remote worker or a digital nomad. On the topic of encryption, if you're working on anything confidential or sensitive for work and send that information through email, a dedicated encrypted email service from Hushmail, Barracuda, Cisco, or many others is essential if you plan on continuing to work remotely. What about Wi-Fi? Well, even with your VPN and password vault set up, you wanna also ensure that you have as much control as possible over your actual Wi-Fi connection and ISP source. If you are traveling, it's best to use your own mobile hotspot rather than connect to public Wi-Fi, especially in coffee shops and airports. If you have an office in a co-working space, it's best to plug your own router into a wired Ethernet port rather than rely on the location's Wi-Fi network. Not only will you get faster Wi-Fi speeds, but have better security. WeWork is still facing legal action from members who discovered that even though their locations had different Wi-Fi channels, all computers connected could easily be hacked by anyone joining the lone public open network. Also, if you're working from home, many residential ISPs are using combo internet modem and Wi-Fi routers. If you or your employees work on secure information or materials, it's best to have a separate Wi-Fi router or even a physical connection to a network switch. This also helps enforce the standard of keeping work data on work devices and keeping work devices on work networks. A lot of vulnerabilities can happen with just the simplest of actions, like sending a document to a different device just to print it. Now, it's time to focus on USB. Never use a random USB thumb drive or any public USB charging port. When it comes to USB thumb drives, they are literally the easiest way to load a virus or vaporware onto a device. It's easy to set a policy that no unknown thumb drives can be used at work or on work computers. USB charging, or what they call juice jacking, is tougher. We've all been there where our device is out 2%, our portable battery is also dead, and there's an actual USB charger open at the airport gate. The problem is that public USB charging ports are also just as vulnerable to being manipulated to inject viruses or spyware. Best practice, always have a portable battery with you. 
or if you can find these handy USB data blockers that could be best described as basically a condom for USB charging. Many of us are working at home, but when we do venture back out into the public, it's important to ensure those work devices also have sightline protection films on laptop, tablet, and smartphone screens. Now that we've covered some of the physical components of remote working cybersecurity, let's talk policies. Besides having a policy of keeping work data on work devices, it's also incredibly important for companies to have InfoSec security procedures in place. This is important for companies, but also those who rely on contractors or freelancers with certain passwords. It's not pleasant to talk about, but there are times you have to either fire or let go of people. Even if it's a simple project ending, even if it's on good terms, while the world adjusted to remote work this year, there have been some disaster stories as to how companies failed this, either when a tech startup laid off employees by yanking their access prior to communicating to them, or a Fortune 100 company that terminated employees but forgot to turn off their access to Slack and other cloud-based services set up outside of their IT department. It's super important to have policies and procedures in place for the worst possible situations, including employee termination, device theft, and network breaches. At a bare minimum, all companies should have basic standard operating procedures in place. Those who raise the bar will not only have policies, but provide their employees with access to software and or hardware devices as well. So if you have any questions about that, or if you have more points that you wanna to add to our cybersecurity, basically technology stack, please put them down in the comments below. I would love to hear them. And while you're down there, you might as well like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and um, give me a compliment on my new hairdo. I'm doing like a half hair thing. Let me know what you think. And other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.